go back. <coughs> I connected Wi-Fi, so we'll see if that works. Sorry, I have LT. I don't know why it's going in and out, but I don't want you guys to miss miss what we're talking about. What were we talking about? <laughs> I was telling a story, you didn't get to hear it because it cut out. Um, hey again. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Hi. Thanks. Sorry if it cuts out, let us know. Yeah. Uh, we should be okay now. Um, I was just talking about the idea of uh, I got to play in the worship team this weekend and we uh, changed one of the songs last minute and our church is very excellent at what they do and they like to have everything rehearsed and uh, so I always want to do excellent um, so I don't like coming unprepared but I had to because I was recording and doing some other stuff and so um, anyway I've learned with Lacey when we started playing music together because I never whenever Lacey and I would do live shows when we first started doing that um, I would actually hire another person to play music with her because I didn't want her to think that I was using her to play music. And she never asked me to play guitar. Because I didn't want him to think I was using him to play music. Yeah. Well, both of us wised up and realized that that was kind of silly. Because the thing, but the thing is, it is a legitimate thing. Well, you thing. had also just left Flyleaf, and so I didn't want it to look like we had left Flyleaf to start something on our own because we were, I was trying to keep it very separate and be like, look, we're not going to play music together even. <laughs> We're not going to do anything together related to music. Because it was, but it, but it was really healing for me, I think, that you never mentioned it. Because that's what they do in the entertainment industry. They use you for your gift. And a lot of times we think our identity is in what we do. But really our identity is in, in our relationship with God. And so when we, when we aren't able to do the thing that we feel like is who we are, you know, like our job, our career, our calling, um, then we don't know who we are, or we, do, we lose our, the ground we're standing on for why we're alive, or why we, why we have joy, or all those things, and so in, in the entertainment industry, I think a lot of times when people maybe stop... Oh, Facebook works. I think when it says recording, uh -oh. later on it'll be available. But for the live stream, it's actually paused. Okay. But for my friend Jasmine says, um, we're human beings, not human doings. <laughs> and that in itself. When you go to Thanksgiving, your parents' house, ask them a week ahead of time for the password for the internet because they don't always have it. By the way, you can see this behind us. Alright, so this is the kids' playroom, I believe. So sorry, pardon the mess. But I also believe it's closer to the uh, the modem. Anyway, what I was saying is funny is. <laughs> Isn't it typical when you go to your parents' house, the internet doesn't work, or they don't know the password for it? <laughs> so, that was just really funny. Okay. okay, I think we're good now. Sorry if it doesn't. Um, if it keeps doing that, I've already tried to disconnect from Wi-Fi. I believe, if anyone can confirm, it keeps recording even when hey, it disconnects. <laughs> it, he said that. Oh, yeah. um, it does keep recording, so you guys would have to watch back later, and you'll see what we said in any time it, it pauses. Right. So, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm flustered now that. No, but it was good. We were just talking about identity, the difference between what we do and who we are, and um, that's a really hard concept to grasp. I think bec um, because we get wrapped up and and call ourselves and just really make that a part of who we are. And when we think about ourselves, we think, oh, you know, oh, hi, my name is Lacey, I'm a singer, which I never say, yeah. by the way, because I don't really feel, I don't really feel like I find my identity in that, even though... Isn't that funny? Did you hear what she says? She doesn't <laughs> think she's a singer. <laughs> yeah, but I do sing. <laughs> it's so, it's, that's not her being humble, I don't think. Like, I, felt, I thought that at first. She never, at least she never identified, identified herself as a singer. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until after she left Flyleaf and we started doing the events I'm talking about where she would go and speak, you know, 
And she's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I need to have like a guitar in them or something. Like I can't just talk to people. Right. Like I think at that point in our lives, and we also just realized that she's a communicator. And what's mm. the vehicle she's going to use? Is it music? Is it just her testimony? Is it speaking? Is it writing books now? You know, and so like that yeah. was that was a very interesting thing that we that I discovered why she doesn't feel like she's a singer. She just feels like a communicator. I think part two, part of it is also harmonize. I don't know how to harmonize. I don't know professional musicianry. I don't know how to um, read music. I don't know how to write it down. I've, I have experience of, and I'm, I'm, I'm very much an all feeling musician. <laughs> so yes. even if it's out of tune, I much rather get the take that I could feel what was being said. I love musicians that aren't perfect, but they have the feeling behind them. Like obviously I cut my teeth on Nirvana and mm -hmm. even like Neil Young, like who you thought was horrible. As a musician, not that he's a bad musician, but that his voice isn't perfect, you know. But then when you listen to the lyrics and the stories, you feel it. So it's just my particular um, response to music in general. It's not, I don't, I don't, I'm not really polished or professional in that way. My sister, however, and my husband, really good musicians, know a lot about music, and that's pretty cool. But. <laughs> Lies. People are laughing at me. <laughs> well, you um, just talked about something that uh, you said a word that I feel like really resonated, and something we were talking about was identity. Yeah. Um, and also too, was it vision we were talking about earlier? Yeah. Um, about dreams and identity. I feel like they're all tied together, and this is much more. This is probably like a a month long series we can do, which might be actually really cool. But Lacey and I used to have a small group that we led in our home um, called Map. I think we might have talked about it on here before, but um. It stood for the Music and Art Alliance of Pittsburgh. Um, we just really felt a, as people who are musicians and artists and have had the privilege to be in some of the like venues and platforms and things that we've got to do with our career, really wanted to help um, encourage and train up other musicians and artists who are doing that. Yeah. I just, I think that most, not most, but a lot of artists and musicians are, um, they are like insecure or they yeah. deal with discouragement or they just deal with things that I think there's already a stigma of being an artist and musician is you feel like you're kind of doing something not normal you know what I mean and yeah. you might be feeling from your parents or relatives or yeah. significant other like hey why don't you do something real with your life yeah, you know right. um, so it's hard enough to, to, to just have that passion and calling you to do that but don't let it alone to start doing it and sometimes you don't see things happening the way you thought they would or it's just different or it's really hard. Like I've always, I mean, my dad is a blue collar worker. We own a plumbing business and I've grown up my whole life doing that. I never worked harder than I did until I became a musician. It's, it's amazing the amount of work that's involved. You know, um, it was funny. Uh, Eric, he's the bass player from Shinedown, posted something recently and he was just saying, it's the, the hour and 45 minutes on stage is, is a lot of fun, but there's still another 22 and a half or whatever hours in the day that you have to fill with other things, you know, that are involved with the work and stuff like that. So a lot of people just see, they see that the show and they're like, man, it must be amazing. There's, you know, it's, it's so great. So anyway, so all I have to say is that like that process of being an artist and kind of what it looks like and, um, yeah. So anyway, so we started this group, um, to kind of minister to and to gather and to encourage each other. And it wasn't just to be like, hey, hang in there, because we were really listening for God's voice. Yeah. I think identity in artists, um, not just artists, I think everybody deals with this, but it, it's wrapped up in how successful am I. Yeah, I okay. So a lot of it had to um, it had to do with success. You know, if you're a singer and you play a show and five people come to the show or nobody comes to the show, what does that say about your identity? Um you know, I think that whenever you feel like success is, of how successful something is, obviously it's defined different for everybody. And so anyway, so we would just gather people like that and um, administer them. And honestly, minister to ourselves as well. I definitely, for a lot of years of my life, um, 
dealt with, I wouldn't say failure. Hi, Atticus. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Um, I wouldn't say that it was failure, but it was just like um, things weren't turning out the way that I wanted to, and that really messed with my identity because I found out during those times that my identity was wrapped up in what I do, what my talent was, or um, all these kinds of things, and so that was just a, a long learning season um, for me. And so anyway... Um, I guess the reason we're talking about that is because, like I said, there's a lot of young adults here um, who are kind of in that college. I didn't really feel those things until I was like college age, probably 22 or something like that. Um, and so I feel like that's come up a few times this week, just that the things of identity and dreams and what you want to do, dealing with that <clears throat> and how they're all related. It's funny because... Um I was just thinking about this with my kids and here we're getting Atticus but just now as we're talking about it just about their identity and who they are and recognizing that a lot of times the freedom that we have as kids I mean as babies his joy is something that I have to I have to stop myself and learn from and um, yeah, I'm teaching him and I'm raising him, but also he's in my life to teach me too. And um, and when I stop and I actually um, learn from him about his joy and how uh, how much he trusts and how much he's he's um, you know able to be in the moment and, and and marvel at things, then actually it pulls me into doing that too. And I'm kind of coming back to that place. It's funny because. You know, people be little kids all the time and and write them off and 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 look them like look at them like an afterthought or something that they need to deal with or get through. But if we actually stopped and considered the reality of the openness of a child's mind and their ability to learn, I think that we could actually learn a lot about that about 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 how to open our own minds and become a lot more humble and, and learn from and grow. Remember to keep growing because they're in a process of growing that's really fascinating to them, like he is. <laughs> he loves learning new things. He loves discovering new things. And I think the older we get, the less we're open to learning new things. Um, and, and I remember um, talking with this my friend Corey yesterday. She came over and was at the house this weekend and um, just about how I never feel like I've arrived at who I am I don't I don't know I can't imagine feeling like I've arrived at who I am because I feel like God is always stretching me in every season he's always pointing out something and going okay great I'm glad we got that down now look at this and and let's deal with this and let's move forward with this and let's grow in this and I feel like I'm always changing all the time so um, when I when I resist that like right now I feel like I'm uh, I got my feet under me with this season with my kids um, and things were learn I'm learning with Joshua Lewis my older one my seven-year-old and arrow and you know having a schedule for them that's really really is good for their hearts that's been challenging to figure out um, with them and and just watching them flourish in it and now all of a sudden God's like okay great now it's time for you to go on tour with Skillet <laughs> mm -hmm. and I remember you know thinking to myself um, and I said this before that I really struggled with doing music as a mom and having a career and being a mom because I wasn't sure how to balance it and I went away on a retreat and prayed about it and I and I feel like the Lord showed me while I was on that retreat first of all for the first two days I felt nothing at all I heard nothing I felt very bored <laughs> I was in a I was at like a, uh, a cabin in the woods and uh, didn't have any sense of anything profound <laughs> and then the last hour I was there um, I just sat still with my journal by a fire and all of a sudden felt this download of understanding of what I was asking which was how do I balance this and what do you think about this God like 
and I just started writing and what came out was that you know if God calls me to go out and I say and I say no and stay home I made my family an idol if God calls me to stay home and I go out mm -hmm. then I've made music an idol or, or my career so I always need to stay close to the Holy Spirit. And it always is that. God's always bringing us to relationship. Once we think we got it without Him, He shakes things. And we can ignore that shaking and go on and get stale and quit growing. Or we can face it and say, okay, I need to readjust and see what you're trying to teach me. Atticus. <laughs> Atticus wants to hold the camera. So, um... So I was I was really humbled by that. I'm like, okay, Lord, um, just keep my heart safe and help me to hear your voice and help me to know. And that's what's so cool about me and Josh being so different in our personalities is that when I am not sure about something, I can look at him and go, what do you think? And he'll say, he'll be the confirming voice of what, of what you know, like I know that it's God if we both agree. Yeah. That's always a good feeling. Yeah. <laughs> we learned that. It's such a simple thing. When we make decisions, Allah, someone said, they told us to go the way of peace, which can sound very aloof. But like when you pray about something together as a husband and wife, and there's a peace over it, even if it's a hard decision. You know, like, for example, Lacey going on tour with Skillet this week or this month. She's going to be gone almost the entire month. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, obviously, on the surface, it sounds like a really awesome, like, yeah, that'll be a blast. Can you come in? Yeah, I'm coming. Okay, Josh. Um, hi, Corey. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it seems like, a, yeah, of course, gosh, you can go out and skillet and sing, you know, play mm -hmm. a bunch of rock shows with Breaking Benjamin. It sounds amazing. But, like, we had to pray about that because, like, she's saying, just whenever you feel like you got your feet underneath you, something like that, and you, for your family, something comes up where now you have to leave your family for almost a month, you know, because there's not room for everybody out there on this tour. and we're just not able to, to be there for everything. And so, um, so we pray about it and, um, God speaks to us, you know, he gives us words about that, but he also gives us a peace that he's going to take care of us and that he's going to bless the time and that there must be something in the season where it's supposed to be for me to draw near to the boys, you know? Yes. And that's really important as a mom to get out of the way sometimes because we always feel like we know what's best. <laughs> for yeah. everybody and um to get out of the way and I've noticed that whenever I um am not involved Josh just he owns his role as a dad so much more with so much more confidence and just is so much more creative and just such a good dad when I'm not interrupting. Thanks. It's not that you're interrupting. <laughs> it's what be like, if there's three lifeguards on duty, you might slack off. But if you're the only one, you're going to really do a good job, right? And the thing is, I didn't realize that was what was the benefit would be the first time that I remember the Lord, you know, really showing me, you need to go away for a weekend and do this. And I remember that being so hard because I don't want to leave the kids. And Josh was like confirming it. And you know, we can tell God speaking to us. I know somebody was talking here and kind of laughing at the idea of, um, oh yeah, you know, you, you, you have to go, you have to go do this hard, you know, rock tour or whatever, and you have to go oh, make poor, money. And, poor you. You know, I, you know, the thing is, it's, it's not about, um, it's not about whether or not I want to do something because I, I know it sounds like super, like he said, super humble of me to be like, I want to stay home with my kids. I don't want to go on a rock tour. But I think I can also be super proud of being this great mom that never, you know, leaves my kids. And I think that's the challenge too. I think I would be more challenged by somebody criticizing me as a mom than I would somebody saying, your voice sucks. <laughs> Cause I, because that is actually something I can really take pride in. And so God is always like challenging me about my pride because it, it, it says pride comes before fall and nothing good in thinking that on our own apart from God we can, we can we got this there's nothing good about that because it in the end it's a just deceit it just deceives your own heart and sets you up to fall and sets you up to so when we put our whole confidence and identity hey guys can you can you do that quietly please thanks thanks 
Um, so that when we when we when we end up going full force and in, 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 into like saying being so proud of ourselves and that's our identity, but then something happens to mess that up, then we don't know who we are anymore. Yeah. And and again, my my heart, my biggest heart is for people who struggle with. Well, I guess because of my own story is suicide, depression, purpose, freedom. Atticus. What's so funny? It was just funny. He was chewing on something. It just looked funny. What he was doing. Well, we are in the we are in the playroom. We're in the playroom. It's a little dangerous. To me. We're at my parents' house, and it's. <laughs> but. But the thing is, you know, what we want to do in everything, and somebody else says. Somebody else said, um, "I give you props. I can barely like, like I'm a mom and I'm exhausted." Well, that's the thing is. Can Ari want to go out? Is that um, I'm exhausted as a mom, <laughs> but the thing is, what when we talk about grace in in faith in in like Christian idea, the biblical concept of grace. I guess there's two different ideas of what grace is. Grace can be um, a covering over of something you did wrong, I guess. But I think that's more mercy than grace. But people use it to mean that sometimes. But grace, actually, the way that I understand it, is an empowering to do something you could never do on your own apart from God helping you do it. And so even with my first child, I clung to grace. I was like, God help. You know, and I needed that time. Um, Joshua Lewis, when he was little, Jack, we call him Jack the Brave. He was, he just had a hard time with, he just was colicky. He had a hard time and I didn't know how to, I didn't understand what I was doing wrong. Um, like whether I was feeding him too much or whether he was getting enough sleep or whether he had, you know, I put the right kind of clothes on him. Like it's just all kinds of little issues that I realize now on my third child, if I had thought, if I had known as much as I knew on the first child, I love you, this one. <laughs> Then I think he would have cried a lot less, and I had to apologize him one time because I was like, "I'm so sorry, I didn't know what I was doing." <laughs> but that's just. But I clung to grace. I would pray, and I would say, "God, should I, should I let him cry right now because he's fine, or should I pick him up?" And every time I prayed and stopped and asked for grace, I knew the right thing to do, and it worked every time. And it was only when I was trying to struggle and strive in my own strength that things would fall apart. And it did fall apart sometimes, when I, even when I was praying. <laughs> but I think that just made me pray even more. It just pushed me into, you know, time with God. That was, I think that was the most intense praying I'd ever done. Um, was when he was an infant and we were struggling with him oh, and his Lord. health. His he crazy. he had asthma as a baby. It was really scary, and but it taught me how to pray. And Josh was like, <laughs> doing. I don't, I don't yell. I'm not a yeller. Lacey, Lacey yells. Uh-huh. She's very passionate. My prayer is usually like, Jesus, I just pray for Josh. I was yelling, like screaming, yelling, Lord. It was it's real. Good. It was it was very real. Like it was. I mean, I was like, I was mad too. That was like the most honest prayer I've ever had. When I was like, I mean, this is just my son who's like having like a, a fit or you know. I'm really I care. Yeah. Like, I just, oh, no. yeah, I got a new prayer language, a lot louder prayer language during that time. It's loud. <laughs> but then also when Josh was trying to sleep, we lived in a one room, like we all lived together in one room. We first moved here, very small space and Josh was doing plumbing and, um, Joshua, or my son would just scream and I would just be like, we're up anyway. I'm just going to pray. Jesus, God bless this child. Let him know how much you love him. Peace, blah, blah. I'm just yelling. And Josh's like, can you please stop yelling your prayers? And I'm like, what difference does it make the baby screaming anyways? That was amazing. Yeah. Can you get that from him so anyway, that was a lot we went through. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Atticus is so <laughs> the easiest baby. He's the easiest baby we've ever had. Thank you, Lord. But the thing is that what I think in the end, what we're what I'm trying to say I is, full volume. I like I'm it. trying to say that 
there is grace to go through whatever you're, you're called to go through. And, and also you need to stop and evaluate. Maybe there's no grace to go through this because I'm not called to go through this. And I could not have imagined touring with Flyleaf with that whole experience. I mean, I don't think Joshua would have survived that, my, my oldest, because he had asthma and every time the weather would change, he would have an attack and we would be a close call. And so when you're touring, you're going to different climates every day. And so um, it wouldn't have been, he wouldn't have been able to do it. We'd have ended up having to come home. And it, there would have been no grace for it. And so I think that's interesting that God did lead us to leave Flyleaf at that time. And it was super important for me and where I was at emotionally and for my son and where he was at physically with his health and for our marriage and what we had to learn as parents. Yeah. So I think it's funny because, you know, you have to know where you're at as and where you're called to. Yeah. Um, I think it's, imp- I don't know. I like that concept too. And it's like, I always try to, Sorry. I was trying to relate things to to everybody. So something I want to say about earlier when we talked about peace and making decisions, you don't have to be married to go to do that. So if you're single, you know what I mean? Like yeah. making decisions, um, having people in your life that you trust that um, have no ulterior motive for any anything like based in that decision <laughs> that you can pray with to make decisions. So I just want to say that so that if anybody is like, well... I'm saying a lot of them want to pray with. That'd be nice if I had that. Yeah. You can still have that through friendship or through mentorship. And if yeah. you don't have someone like that in your life, I highly recommend it. We talked about that today. Um, that there is wisdom in the multitude of counselors. And so Lacey and I typically have at least two to three people that we seek for counsel and bounce things off of whenever we've definitely had things we've prayed about. She heard this. She heard black. I heard white. And we both felt very strongly about it. Yeah. And we've had to go to counselors and be like, okay, well, this is what we're hearing. How do we reconcile that? Um, so I just need to say that about making decisions, but also, too, um, about what she's talking about. You know, we're coming from the perspective of how do we balance being rock stars and parents, you know, which doesn't seem like it's something that's that relatable, but, like, it really does relate to everyone. And, and like she was saying earlier, that's a really to re- cool It relates in, in the sense of everybody was a child of parents at one point. And you had your your relationship with them. My mom was trying to follow her dreams and also trying to survive and take care of six kids. Yeah. And so for me, it's really personal. And everybody, you know, also has a calling and a dream. You have a call. Everybody has a calling from the Lord. God is calling each of you to do something really specific for each season. And sometimes it looks the same, yeah. pretty close to the same thing for a long time. And sometimes it looks different every day. Yeah. And so it's definitely what what I really want to mention or you'd come away with. Is yeah, the concepts are the same. have grace for what, yeah, you know, I was, grace for what you're called to. I was looking at, um, on Instagram today, Justin Bieber had posted a picture of him and Kanye West praying. And the caption said that, um, that he just wanted to be really transparent to let everyone know that he's really struggling right now and that he can use prayer. You know, it's like, what do I have in common with Justin Bieber, someone who's been famous almost his entire life? Um, you know, something I've learned with Lacey. As we, sorry, Atticus really wants to get the camera. Um, when I first met Lacey, I wasn't used to being around a lot of famous people, you know, musicians I've looked, to, looked up to my whole life or thought of them as real people and I would meet them and I'm like, oh my God, they're real. And she's like, of course they are. Why? But there's this, for some reason, this feeling of like, when you see someone on a movie or a musician, that there's this weird disconnect where they feel like they're an actor in a movie, but they don't actually exist in real life. Well, truth is, is they do, you know? And they deal with all the same things that everyone else does, you know? Yeah. I think of Justin, and Lacey and I have prayed for him for a lot, a lot of, a lot of, I don't know, a few years at least. She's been praying him for, for a while, just... Because we, you know, he's always posts a lot of stuff about his just, relationship with Jesus. I just pray for him because, you know, sometimes God will just highlight somebody to you. Yeah. And um, and I recognize, you know, I don't know, it's just he just was highlighted to me several years ago, in random ways. There's also there's lots of people like that that I seem that I'm really disconnected from. 
but God will highlight them. And that's a really important thing to recognize too. When when somebody's on your mind a lot and he's and maybe you recognize maybe that God's highlighting that person to you so that you'll pray for them. Yeah. So that's one of the ways if it keeps coming up, that might be the Holy Spirit saying, I want you to pray for them. You have you have a way to pray that's important for what they're going through. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know what Justin's going through, but I do want to encourage you guys to pray for him. Um, he's he's newly married, so that's something that I have in common with Justin. Is he's uh, he's married now. You know, that's a completely new life. It's something that he's yeah. never done before, and so there's a lot that comes with that too. You know, yeah. and I'm sure the pressures of being famous and his wife being famous and yeah, just needing probably time to establish their marriage without the whole world watching them and judging them or yeah. taking pictures of them or asking them questions and wanting yeah. to know stuff is probably a big deal. So anyway, all that to say um, that oh, if you didn't see his post, you know, I'd encourage you guys to pray for Justin and his wife Haley yeah. um, because he asked for it. Yeah. 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 Uh, it is, I believe, around 7.30 or so. Um, I don't know if you if you're just tuning in. We are live from Grandma's house. <laughs> yeah, she um, they have my parents' church. They have they had some of the young adults over tonight, and um, from their church, yeah. Yeah, from my parents' church, and so they were making some food. But uh, I think we were gonna maybe go play some songs, and so we wanted to come over here to be with them, and also to be with you guys, and so we're trying to merge the two together. So I think what we might do is um, I'm gonna go get them ready. Maybe we'll play a couple of worship songs with them, and uh, we can all join in together. So I'll be right back if you want to hang out with. And out. Well, you guys can ask Joshua Lewis Joshua questions. Joshua, come sit with me. Here, lag it again. So let's see, Joshua. Uh oh. Hang on. Uh oh, the baby. He's choking. No, he's not choking. Hey, come here. <laughs> so, Joshua Lewis, can you tell me? Is there something specific that God's been teaching you lately? Um, not really. Well, I remember today you were talking to somebody about. Oh, it was Corey. You were talking to Corey about something that we were eating. You said about Martha and Mary. Yeah, like, um, she, I think she was, like, working or something, mm-hmm. and, um, I said, you should stop being Martha and start being Mary. <laughs> and it was funny because she, she really felt like that that is what she should be, she should be sitting down and she was working instead. She should be sitting Hey, here. Corey. <laughs> There's Corey. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so, I, I think, um... Okay. You want to take it? No, I'm not. I'll take it. And here we are meeting the adults. Okay. Wait, where's the nerve? Was there a nerve? Come So everybody's eating gnocchi and. N- they're, they're trying to get everything ready for you guys. I hear them wrestling around. Josh, you know where to... Oh, so we're going to play some songs for you guys. Say hi, everybody. Hello. Hello. Mm. It smells amazing. It here. does smell good. Smells like cookies. That's my dad. Hello. You guys met Monasterm. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> They were making knockies. How'd they turn out? Hey! Yeah, they're delicious. Here, take a look. Look at that. I'm gonna eat. And I'm not even Italian. <laughs> How many cooks do we have? Who all can cook? I've got a few things I can make. All right, I'm gonna try to put you guys over here. You hold that. I'm just. I got it. I tuned my voice, so I'm not playing guitar tonight, sorry. That's okay, you can take a break tonight. Cool, look at that. 
Hey, is that a Christmas tree? No, it's a Valentine's tree. It is a Valentine's tree. That's cool. I got the Christmas tree. That's our department. Got everybody that's sitting over here. I don't have chairs. Next year, that's all. Got reserve space. You made it. Yeah. <laughs> we did a really bad job. Was there cookies? No, it was knockies, that's all. So oh, cool. I smell that too. Maybe it's the candle. It's a candle. Yeah. We are going to make chocolate pierogies, though. What? What? We're going to yeah. make some chocolate pierogies. Chocolate pierogies. Chocolate marshmallow and chocolate. peanut butter marshmallow. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. 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 some songs. We can play it right after that, okay? Are we gonna sing this song? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, so this song, off. this song is um is one of the first songs that we wrote for our study, Reflect Love Back. This is the Reflect Love Back community on here, and um these are people who've gone through our Bible study. So the thing is, like, you know, a lot of people get hurt because they listen to somebody, a preacher, or like a church situation, or just somebody who talked to them about God, and then it turns out that person like hurt them or things changed, or you know, people get hurt a lot if you heard that, you know. Are you singing? <laughs> and then they walk away from God because of something someone did. Yeah. But the thing is, we don't have to walk away from God because of things people do. We can draw closer to God. And so what we wanted to give people was the tools. God gave this to us, but sometimes we just don't realize that we have it already. But we want to give people access to, access to reading the scriptures so that they can draw close to God themselves and know when somebody's you know, when you when you go to church and somebody and the Bible, the preacher says, "Okay, open your Bibles to First Corinthians, whatever." He's not just saying that so you'll feel you'll feel guilty for not having a Bible. He's doing that so that you know he's not just making something up. Mm -hmm. It's there so you can check him, so you can say, "Oh, it does say this." And what? And, and, and then and then if you ask a further question like, "Well, does he really mean that?" Is the way the preacher's saying it, can I read it in context? You actually can. You have the source resource yourself. That's why the scriptures are so important. A lot of times we we get uh, stuck on like um, the feelings we get in church and how good the feelings make us feel because the spirit is so beautiful when it falls. We can feel his presence, and but we can feel those feelings in other situations that maybe aren't. Like, you can feel the chills when you go listen to a person sing who's, who has no regard for God at all. Because, you know, so when you, so when you get that feeling to know that it's God, you need the scriptures to tell you what he's like. Because we can, if we follow just the feelings we have all the time, it can deceive us, right? So that's why I feel like it's both. We need both. We need the scriptures to, to help us know truth. And we need the spirit to help us discern that truth in our everyday life. So you need both. And usually somebody either emphasizes one or the other. Or And so that's why it's so... Hi, are you wanting to tell somebody something? You have something to say? You have something to say? Mm -hmm. Tell them. Say hi. <laughs> so... The, so Reflect Love Back is just um, a way to teach people the habit of meeting with God in the morning through the scriptures and in the evening through the scriptures. But we also wrote songs, and that's, I think, the easiest way to get into the spirit and to feel the spirit while it's worshiping with songs and music. So we have a song for each week. This is for the first week. Um, it's, it's called The Return, and it's about having open hands before God. Because a lot of times we come to God like this. Oh God, give me this thing. And here your hands are like this because you're holding on to something else. It's like, okay, drop that, I'll give you this. Or you're asking for this thing, but really it's way, it's not the right time. Or it's not the right thing. <laughs> I have something better. So it's going to God, knowing he's good, and going, okay, I'm dropping it all. I have empty hands. What do you have for me? And trusting that he's good. And so... A lot of times we can go through our lives and pile up all the bad things on top of each other and say, well, what about this? And what about this? And what about that? And what about that? 
But we can do that with the things God has done too. He can do it back to you and say, well, what about this? And what about when I do this? And what about when I give you this? And what about when I protected you here? And what about when I brought this person in your life? And what about this and this and this? And we can sit and think about those things. And God says we should. We should sit and remind ourselves of all the good things that we've seen in our lives. To use our minds the opposite way. To think on things that are good and lovely and right and true. Because we're so used to doing the opposite. Because we're bombarded with that in the air. Like, we're in a spiritual battle all the time. So we're going to sing... So we're gonna sing this song. This is the first song. And Cheerios. That's cool. <laughs> so this song's called The Return. You guys can sing along. We can't hear you, but <laughs> you can sing along. And we'll have a time where we're quiet. And if and we do this with Reflect Go Back, we'll, we'll, we'll just keep playing the music and we'll stop sing, I'll stop singing. And if they have a scripture or a prayer or a, or, a, or a lyric on their heart, they'll type it in and I'll sing it for them. But since you're here, you can sing it. You can you can say the scripture. You can pray the prayer during that time of quiet. And and if you have something to say to you out I can, that you want to sing out, I might sing your prayer out or whatever. So that's just waiting on the Spirit and letting the Spirit do what He wants to. Because the Bible says, be still and know that I'm God. But a lot of times we just aren't still. It's hard to be still, because we have to deal with all the things that we don't deal with when we're still. And that's why the Holy Spirit waits on us to come to Him sometimes, because we have to get, we have to deal with our mess to get there, because we have to be still. And all the things start coming up, and He's like, bring that to me. Bring that to me, too. Keep bringing that to me. Don't hide. Don't, you need to face it. Don't hide. Don't ignore it. Just be still and let it come to the surface, and I'm going to deal with it. See, ask me what I think about that thought. Ask me what I think. And this is what I do with my kids. My kids sometimes, when they, especially when they feel like they're in trouble, they want to hide in shame because they did something they shouldn't. And I'm like, just talk to me about it. And as soon as we talk about it, it's out in the open and it's no shame anymore. And that's what God's always saying to us. He's like, talk to me about it. Don't be ashamed. He already knows it. Might as well just go to him and talk to him about it. What do you think about this thought? What do you think about these things? And he always has a good answer for you. That brings that feeling of like what being washed clean, being washed clean when you bring it to him. That's what he wants. He wants to. He doesn't want to shame you because he took all our shame on the cross. Mm -hmm. He wants to clean you off and make you have that feeling of being released again. You know. So it's not like he wants you to bring it to him so he can make you feel bad about it. You feel bad about it when you hide in shame, <laughs> but when you bring it out to the open to him, that's when he can, he can say, okay. I, and you can look in his eyes and see he's not ashamed of you. Because he took your shame. He already knew about that thing. So you shouldn't hide. You should go to him with it. So that's, again, the open-handed thing. And, <laughs> what do you think, Josh? I'm talking a lot. Mm -hmm. play song? Yeah. Yeah. 
profit a man as he gain the whole world But lose his own soul Oh vain philosophy
and it was so heartbreaking because she's such a beautiful girl. And, and if you would hear her talking, you know, I'm ugly, I'm not worthy, I'm not good, I'm, and it's it, and it was just all the lies of the enemy. When we were talking, and we were saying there is no battleground but her mind. You know, I mean, that's what the that's what the enemy is using is her mind to bring her down. And I just know that there's other people out there that are going through the same thing. And I just my heart breaks for this girl, and you know, and, and, I, and they asked me to pray, and, and I said, I, I never just say yes, I'll pray, unless I'm definitely going to pray, and I always say when the Lord reminds me, you know what I mean, but, you know, if the Lord reminds you about praying for her, but, but it, it was kind of just a lesson in the, the devil's playground, you know what I mean, he, we don't have to listen to it, we don't have to believe it. But if we choose to listen to it, it really is a bad path to go. And, but it's not the direction that we have to go. The Lord has so much better. And so let's so pray for her because I think she represents a lot of people. Right. So you start praying, and if anybody else wants to join in, please. Okay. Heavenly Father, you know exactly her name. You know exactly every detail. You, you know every detail of her life, Father God, and you know how beautiful she is. You died on the cross for her, Father God. You paid for the price for all the things that she feels she fell short in. You paid that price. And Lord Jesus, I just give you the glory and the praise that, that she comes from a family that knows you, that they can keep preaching to her and keep talking to her and, and keep giving her the word, Father, that she would turn in that direction and she would run to you. We just lift her up to you tonight, Father God, and we just ask that you would surround her, that you would guard her mind, that you would protect her mind in every direction, Father God, from the enemy's voice, that she would see her beauty, that she would open the word, she would see the price that you paid for her life, that she would see that, that she does not have to be ashamed, she does not have to feel unworthy, that Lord Jesus, she's not only beautiful, but she is loved and she's treasured and she's precious in your name and we ask you lord to surround her to break through that depression father and for the others that are out there that are that are facing this exact same thing because it is it's just a trick of the enemy and we don't have to listen to it and i pray lord god that you would you would guard their mind i know that when i first came to you lord that that i asked you to shine it just like a red light green light i just said just shine that red light when i'm supposed to stop listening and i know you did it for me and I pray you do it for others, Lord, in Jesus' name. I just don't know how to play an acoustic version of it. I, I know the solo. Is it one of your songs? Or no? No. No. What's the one that what's the one that I love that I said it sounded like a chorus that you would sing in church? Yeah. I don't know where it like back songs. Let's do what everybody here knows. Is there something good? We could do always oh, be loved us. Everybody knows that one. <coughs> Does anybody have a song, uh, like a song, was anybody thinking of a song while we were praying for that girl? Beth? Second. All right. We have a quiet crowd tonight. Oh, look, Kristen's telling you, G, D, E minor, C, 2. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's giving you the chords. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. In my Sunday school class with the teenagers. Yeah. Today I, I read them from Titus. 
this is for all of us. It's yes, like, good. Right? Titus is such a little book, too. It's mm -hmm. like this little super tiny book in the back of the Bible. And it says, For the grace of God that brings salvation appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no. Wow. To ungodliness, world passions, and live self-control, upright and godly oh, lives in the present age. In other words, we can say no to the temptations of the enemy. Yeah. And we have to do that. And I was teaching this to our teenagers this morning in, yeah. in class. And pray for our teenagers. Yeah. It's, they're, they're lost. Yeah. And they have one foot in the world. Yeah. And they want to, they want to, and, and they, I love your illustration of coming to God with your, no, with your fist closed because you're mad. Mm -hmm. you got to come to God and say, what do you have? Yeah. So, I, they, we, I don't think they know that he's, I think it's really hard, it's like, because they don't know he's better. He's better than what the world has to offer. He really is better. His high is better. Yeah. His, his joy is better. His peace is real. His solutions are better. His love is real. Mm -hmm. It's better. I don't think they know. I think what? they expect they're getting relief. And they're getting affirmation, and they're getting peace, but it's all this temporary false peace that lets them down further than before they even right. went up. And we I think that's the hard part is we got to show them he's better. You talked about you know they get the feeling they get you know they get emotional mm -hmm. in a great service or a convention or mm -hmm. a rally, but then they go back. They're not saying no. Yeah. And God, so they want them to. And what you're saying is that we have the power, and they don't feel like they do. Yeah, we do have the power to say no. Yeah. Just like you said to those thoughts, give me a red light when I have to stop that thinking. Because we recognize that when it's destructive, really obvious in our mind, when we start thinking terrible things about ourselves, we don't recognize it's destructive always when we're thinking things that are just the opposite of what God desires for mm -hmm. us. <laughs> but it is destructive. It's the same destruction, right? Because he says, I said before you life and death, choose life, live. I want it to be, I want you to have life. I don't want you to have death. So you don't always equate sin with death, but it is. And we recognize it when we're going towards a cliff in our physical body, but not in our spiritual. So you're right. It's the Holy Spirit. We have to step over it in order to get there. And we can say no. That's what we don't feel like. So many people say, I think there's a bad message in the church. And I talked about this in a footnote back, saying that you're never going to stop sinning. It's just, it just makes you say, oh, you know what? I can't stop. And so why would they try? They're in the moment. They heard the sermon. They're sitting there going, well, I don't have the ability. What you just said is that he gives us the ability to say no and to step over it. That's what he empowers us to do. What we couldn't do before we were slaves to sin. Now we're slaves to righteousness, and we have to say no to God in order to say yes to this. Because he's in us going, don't go that way, don't do that thing, don't, don't, don't harden your heart against what I'm softening you to in me, right? So you're saying that we have the power. And that's really important people have to know. I have the power to actually overcome this. I'm not a slave to this, right? It's so good. When you said it first about how, what were you saying about the enemy? It's like they're not gonna have they're not gonna have the joy or they're not gonna yeah. have and, that was what you, you said guys, in your testimony. Yeah, you guys so missed it, but it. I was giving my testimony a couple of weeks ago and I, you guys didn't hear it and I'll, I'm just gonna cut to the end of it. But when I went to the altar to the accept to accept the Lord, I mean I felt the Holy Spirit tell me to go to that altar. I almost ran and jumped over the pews to get there. But when I left the church that night, I did not, and this is our church, when I left the church that night, I did not get to the end of the parking lot, and the enemy already hit me, and already told me I wasn't going to have any fun. He said, why did you do that? You don't want to be a nun. Was, you don't want to be a nun. <laughs> he said, that's, that's boring. I literally slapped myself across the face and said, why did you do that? That's the end of your life. You're going to have to sit and read your Bible. <laughs> you are going to be bored out of your brains. Why did you do that? And like I said, that's the only place the enemy has to battle us is in our mind if we listen. Mm -hmm. And stupid me, I, 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 I didn't listen completely, but it stuck there. And I didn't tell it to leave. Sometimes we have to tell those thoughts to go. That's good. Sometimes we just can't just let them come in and just listen to them and ignore them. Sometimes we have to actually have to say to them, that's not true. Here's what the Bible says. At the time, I didn't know what the Bible said. 
But when you know the Lord, you're able to, oh, you know, you're able to speak back and say, no, that's not truth. Here's what the Bible says. And that's why we do. We, we, it, the scriptures are so important. You're sitting there battling with the scripture in Titus. Mm -hmm. We talked about doing Titus as a, as a Bible script video. You want to talk to him? Do you want to, um, you said you wanted to sing. Uh, do you want to try it or no? Oh, yeah, we can try it. I don't remember how it goes. How does the um, verse go? I forget. What are does the first words? Does anybody remember the melody? Here, I can... What are yeah, the first words for forever? <laughs> we play it in our band. <laughs> nice girl. I can get everybody from down there. It is. Let me take it. No, we go. Yeah. Okay. Good? Oh, yeah, we're, we're going to look it up for you. Uh, GDE minor C, but I just don't remember how the verse goes. That's so true. There's no high I've ever found that can compare to being lost in worship. That is so true. I pray that everybody would be able to feel that presence. Yes, Lord. Wow. Forever. Yeah, Jessica, I want to I want to um, address what you're saying. You're saying I wish the church wouldn't um, belittle how hard it is to say no, and how difficult it is to just trust Jesus. And that's I want to say yes, you're correct. And I have felt that too in church before that the people that, that I just feel like. When I hear that, sometimes I'm like, they're not going through what I'm going through. They must not be dealing with what I'm dealing with. And the fact is that actually is a lie about most church people. They have been through some of the worst things, worse than what I've seen. They have gone through the fire in ways that we expect they haven't because of the way they're talking about it. Because we don't feel that that ability to just say no. And this, what, 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 I'm sorry, what, what's your, what's your first name again? Dave. Dave. What Dave was sharing was not his own thoughts. He was sharing the scripture. He was sharing the promise that God gives us in the Bible. And that's the whole point of this study is that we want to know what the truth is. And sometimes we have to fight to hang on to the truth that we do have the power to say no, even when it feels difficult. And that when we choose to trust Jesus, we are not going to do it. And like, we're not going to have, we're not going to be disempowered. We have the power. We do have a choice to make. And choices are hard to make the right one, but they actually are your freedom from God. You have a freedom to choose when we don't realize it, even when it's difficult, whatever the consequences come. And the Bible says that if we suffer for righteousness, then God has a special miracle and blessing in mind for us when we do that. So anyway, I, I want to say that you're right, and I, I understand what you're saying. And then this is why we're trying to encourage everybody in this in the scriptures because they're actually the most powerful thing we can hang on to. And they're very true. Oh, baby, what's the matter? Do you, we got a play? I don't know who should play. It's, it's going to fall apart. Let me see. I did a Facebook post this week and I thought it was so good. I'll share it with you. Okay. It was, I, I said, sometimes, I said, what, what's that game called telephone where I whisper something in his ear and it goes around the room? Okay, and and I said sometimes we we see that in 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 the church and in Christianity. Sometimes we see that we we it starts with truth. Okay, it starts with the Word of God, and then it goes from one person to the next. And before you know it, people will say like people will say scriptures or, or sayings, and they'll say, "Oh, that's in the Bible," and it's like that's not even in the Bible. Yeah. But or even other religions or false religions. It starts with truth, but by the time it gets passed from person to person to person to cult to whatever, it ends up not being truth. Yeah. So like you were saying, you have to go back to the truth. Right. And like Dave, you know, he went to the word. That's right. where the truth is. So right. it's not like listening to somebody else and believing what they're saying exactly. is truth. It's believing what the word says is truth. Yeah. And so I think that's really good because, and it's hard when you don't know somebody too, because, um, in order for somebody to correct 
somebody, they have to know that they're loved. You know what I mean? Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. If you are correcting somebody and they don't know that you love them, you're probably going to write that off. I mean, if you don't, you're a really special person because usually I think that's what you do. It's out of relationship. And I think that's why a lot of times um, I feel like even though there's a lot of things we can say online to say the truth, um, unless we're in a relationship with somebody, the most effective thing is actually that we love them first. And then they're open to hear, do you love me? Do you care to understand where I'm coming from? Do you care to know that I'm not just trying to be evil? Do you care to know that I have like struggled through things? And then once that you know that and you can see their perspective, right? That's when you're able to listen to what they have to say. On, on that note, I don't think people want the church to pull out a rule book and read the right. rules. Right. They want to know you love them mm -hmm. and that you want the best for them. Like, I think it was Pastor Gary that was talking one time, and he said, God doesn't set down rules right. to, to make us follow, like, the law and make us follow rules. He sets down rules so that we live in peace, we live right. in joy. Mm -hmm. That we, just like we set down rules for our kids, we want them to be happy. We want them, and, right. you know, I, I think, like you said, when you show love, and I'm really concerned about you, then they realize it's not, I don't want you to follow a rule. Uh -huh. I want you to be happy. Yeah, a lot of people, and, and, and that's, that's, General, that's what it should be, and but sometimes I guess it does get into controlling weirdness, <laughs> and people have experienced that. I mean, I've been controlling and weird before. <laughs> I mean, with people around me, you know, as a religious person, maybe I've done that before. Um, but I recognize too that people run like away from that so hard. <laughs> and so, as far as relationships go, it's so true. We don't want to read a rule book, and the reason why I'm pointing to people to the scriptures is because. I experienced the scriptures be so supernaturally valid in every way as a as words from God. And I also I've experienced it and I've also as a smart aleck atheist studied enough to know the supernatural nature of the scriptures. And so I feel like to to be able to depend on the Bible and say I'm not trying to teach you something so you'll follow my rules. I'm not trying to control you so you'll be like me. I just want you to know what the Bible says because I feel like, you know, it speaks for itself and it is always life-giving in the end if you really ask God. And if it feels weird, that's when we press in even more and keep studying and be like, okay, God, I know you're good, but this doesn't look good, so what does this mean? And then we continue to, you know, that's why I think the Spirit and the Scriptures are so important to go together, you know. Yeah, so... Oh, I'm sorry. I, I wish I could read everybody's comments again. I'm. I always say this. I'm. I'm gonna go back and read everything and and um and try to respond. That's so true. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. <laughs> so true. Oh. So anyway, I, I'm so thankful you guys for joining in. If there's anything you guys wanted to ask, like me personally or I don't know I, I don't get to hang out with y'all I don't really know you guys and here I am saying you can tell people what to do if you know them <laughs> <laughs> and so if there's anything you guys want to ask me or um or something on your heart that we want to pray for specifically for you guys you need to do that before we go I don't think it's an accident that we're all here in the same room right tonight so even though there's like a live stream that perhaps if you have a prayer that you wouldn't mind sharing that you would like somebody to pray for you, it would relate to somebody else. Too. Okay. Is there anything from anybody? Can I just say I want to pray for you? Is that okay if I do just pray for you? Can you sit in the middle like in the mush pot? What do they call it? <laughs> so when you play, when you play, I don't know, that's a game I played when I was a kid. <laughs> so let's pray for you. What's your name? Parker. Parker, nice to meet you. Can we all just mm -hmm. pray for him? Pray for Parker. Is that okay with you? Yeah, okay, so we're going to pray for Parker. My Father, I thank you for Parker, God. I thank you that you know his life and you know him from the time you formed him in, in his mom's belly. You know the plans that you have for him, you know, um, the passions in his heart, you know, what the depths of who he is, you know, how his mind works, 
you know the things that makes him light up and and you know the things that makes him run and so I just praise you God that you are <laughs> you are calling him to be a friend of yours I thank you that friendship is so much different from just working for somebody friendship is where we actually get to hang out and hear each other's thoughts. I think that you want Parker to hear your thoughts about other people because you love them so much. You want them to know how much you love people. You want them to know what you're going to do in the world around them because you just like hearing his thoughts and you like hearing him talk back and forth with you. I pray that if uh, I pray that you'd bless his prayer life to be able to speak with you freely with a with an open heart and he wouldn't be um, religious in his prayers but he wouldn't talk to you like it's a real relationship yeah thank you that you're calling him to be a friend yeah that you give him peace, Lord, where there's been turmoil. I pray that he would bring peace where he where his foot lands, he would just bring peace and change the atmosphere. That he would be a thermostat, not a thermometer. He would set the temperature with your presence. It would just hang out with him, just be like call him on adventures with you. Come on, Parker, let's roll. I got to share the word. Like, we, we got, I got, I got, I want to show you something. Let's go hang out. And I just pray that you'd, um, you let him have that kind of a freedom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yay. All right. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. And I pray that you guys would, whoever that was for to, say, no, when we pray for people, it also is for other people as well. So I just pray you receive it. And we pray you be blessed this week and that the Holy Spirit would be speaking to you guys and you would be in the scriptures and, and be getting confirmation about what he's saying and you would have all the